What's going on, guys? Now, Simone here at Power 105.1 with a very special guest today, Code of the Friend. Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. So, um, Brooklyn, New York City, you know what I'm saying? Born and raised. That's all I know. You that's know, all you know. My mother, my father, my grandfathers, my grandmothers, you know? <laughs> Do you live Brooklyn, in Brooklyn now or did you like move? Yeah, yeah. I still live in Clinton Hill, you know? I see you be traveling though all the time. I see you in LA. I see you doing shows in like, uh, what was it, Cleveland? Like, I, I see mean, you out. I travel as much as I can, you know what I'm saying? Just to get back home. I try real hard to get back home. You know, I got a son. Right. He's like a year and change, so. I try to I try to stay home as much as possible, but you know when when it's all calls, you just gotta be out there. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. Yeah. So tell me, how was uh, your new project? Anything? Uh, and anything. like, what were some of the inspirations behind the project? Uh, a lot of the inspiration behind anything, and the reason why I even started making it was just I was just so fed up with you know how the, how the industry was and. You know, all of the PR and all of the politics that I just wanted to make something that was true to me. Right. And that was real and raw and gritty, but at the same time, sonically beautiful. So I just got in the studio my, by myself. It was just me and the engineer half the time. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? I was wearing a lot of, I was wearing socks a lot of the time in the studio, you know, cozy. Like really getting cozy. Yeah. And just making music. I was booking like five to 10 hour sessions, you know? Like, so I just, and, and that's why I love it. And that was kind of the inspiration. Just, I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to make it. And that's why I called it anything with a period. Because mm. I wanted it to sound like anything. Like, I didn't care about. It sounded like something. I didn't want people to have an idea about like what it was gonna be about and you know how the flow is. What what would the songs were gonna sound like? I just wanted it to sound just so like organic and just like just like music. Right, that's dope. I had saw on uh, your Instagram you like put up a post that said, I guess people were saying like you should change your flow or like whatever the case may be. <clears throat> do you feel like that's like a part of the reason why you put out anything? Like, do, do you feel like, how do you feel about people always saying like change your sound? I feel like once you reach a, a level of success or a level of like popularity, people mm -hmm. are gonna tell that, say that about you, you know? Right. You need to do this and you need to do that. You know yeah. what I mean? Because there's so many people listening to you and when there's that many people listening, it's like everybody has an opinion, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it, is part of the reason why I just did it because it's just like I just don't care. It was a it was definitely to show people I don't I don't care. You know what I'm saying? So, and it worked. Yeah. Being yourself, you know, it worked. Mm -hmm. Do you plan on like getting signed to a label? Um, I mean, it's always like it's kind of always a thing that's around. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when you're an artist and you're up and you're coming up and you're independent, you know you go to label meetings and you do this but I mean once you enter that label world it's a whole different ball game you know what I mean like your money isn't your money anymore and you gotta your music isn't your music anymore you know what I'm saying you you are in, you know you're an item to be sold you're a commodity and it's that's business that's the business but um I don't I don't think I'll be I want to be signed anytime soon just because I know I wouldn't get the deal that I want you know mm, what I mean right and I'm just kind of like doing it on my own terms so for now I'm good right here you're enjoying that freedom yes, I can dig it um so what is something that you're looking forward to the most you know within like the next 10 years of your career um I guess touring you know um but you already been doing that yeah. I've been seeing you traveling <laughs> but I want to do more of it you know yeah I wanna, like Go to different countries and you know what I'm saying. I want to tour the world. Yeah, aren't you about to go to South Africa? Nah, I'm not. I'm not going. But like a lot of people are asking me to go. Yeah, know? I saw your Twitter mentions. I'm sorry, I'd be stalking yeah. social media before <laughs> before the artists come in. But I saw your mentions. Mad people was like, yeah, come South Africa, want you? Yeah. How does that feel? You have fans like international fans. That's dope. I mean, it's beautiful, but I feel like. You work so much that you kind of don't even realize how you know the impact. Yeah, the impact. That you, so it's just like I'm kind of I'm kind of just letting it settle in that yo. I really got fans all over the world, and it feels good and it's humbling and all that. You know, you you definitely gotta appreciate stuff like that. Right. You know? So when did you first start rapping? Um, and like, what made you want to start rapping? Honestly, Jay Z made me want to start rapping. Just listening to um, my my brother was a big Jay Z fan. Mm -hmm. So I was always just like looking into his old his CDs and stuff like that, and 
popping them in, like, oh, this is fire. You know what I'm saying? I remember listening to the cassettes, you know? And the first instrumental that I ever wrote over was um, Jay-Z in my lifetime. And I just was, I was just right into it. And I was like, I was trying to like emulate his flow and his, and the things he was saying. That's and, dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that, he kind of like brought me into this whole realm of like wanting to write and wanting to rap. And after that, I just started developing my own sound, my own like style of writing. And then boom, I kept going. That's fire. Yeah. I think you stand out because like you're an individual and you also play instruments, you know, yeah. like do you play again? Uh, I play keyboard, and I play guitar, I play bass. Um, I, I'm, I'm classically trained on a trumpet, but I haven't played that in years, you know. <laughs> and yeah, so. that's dope. And you spit, and yeah. you do, and you edit videos, yeah. and like what? You're like a well-rounded Renaissance man. <laughs> art, man. I love art, you know. Do you have you uh, like done your own videos? Yeah. All yeah, of them? Pretty much all of them. You know, I've directed every one of my videos, and most of the videos I literally shoot myself, like. I propped them up on the camera, on the um, tripod, and I just, like, spit. That's yeah. lit. <laughs> no, that's really lit. Yeah. Um, so what has impressed you the most so far in your journey in the industry? Um, just the reach. Reaching people. It's, like, crazy. Like, being able to reach people. It's like being able to, it's like, I'm a New York artist, you know? Mm-hmm. Always been from here. Barely ever left, you know? And... When I go to the West Coast and there's people lining up, you know what I'm saying, like for blocks, just to, to see me perform, it's like it's it's crazy. Right. And reaching people is just it's something I've always wanted to do. And so like that's that's pretty much it. It's like that's better than any you know write up in the double XL or the complexes or whatever. That's better than all of that. Right. You know, it's like the people showing up for you. Yeah. And it's like they're inspired by this music and they want to reach out to you and they want to touch you and they want to like hear you and see you and it's like and all I want to do is like reach back out and just show them the love that they're showing me so like I love it that's dope right. so have you had any like crazy tour stories so far like something you just can't believe happened any mm. stalkers like anything I want to talk about it but people probably watching you know <laughs> <laughs> they could be watching they right. stalking me they watching but that's hilarious. Like, nah, tour stories. That's I like that. See, you need to you need to copyright that joint right there. <laughs> tour stories. Um, freaking. Hmm. It was one time I went to. I was in Chicago. It was probably gonna kill me. Um, I was in Chicago and I did this show and I got stupid drunk. You know what I'm saying? I got more. I got way too drunk because there was too many of my friends around me. You know, you know mm, what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know when you're real comfortable. And good like, vibes, good yeah, time. I got, I got, I got a little too smizzed. And um, uh, there was this, there was this chick, and she was just, she was just like all, all on my shit. And I was just like, man. And I was too drunk to even understand what was going on. And what was crazy is, like, she was trying to get back to, back to the, um, to, to the Airbnb we were staying at. And apparently I was 100% with it until my boy was like, yo, you need to chill. And then like I listened to him and we didn't do that. Aww. But, when I, but what's crazy is that I did a whole bunch of shit that night that I'm like, yo, I did that. Don't even I remember. Said that. Some I, drunk nights, man. Yo, what was, was you crazy. drinking, Hennessy? I was drinking everything. Everybody <laughs> was buying me drinks, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, so yeah, I wasn't yeah. even paying for nothing. So it's just like the next day when I realized all of the stuff that I did and said and was about to do, I was like, yo. Your I, friends had I, all on Snap. I literally apologized to everybody Aww. that I was around because it was like apparently I was wilding out. So I guess that's a that's a crazy story. So now you kind of like watch what yeah, you drink when you go I out there. I, <laughs> I, I limit it to three now. You know what I'm saying? That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Are you a you're a, you like dark liquor? You like clear liquor? Both. Both. Yeah. Both. I'm dangerous. Oh, I'm I dangerous. see. <laughs> um. So what do you do in your free time? What do you like to do for fun? Um. I like to chill. To you know, chill. I'm a big, I'm a chill person. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like, especially now that I got a kid, mm-hmm. I love to chill. You know what like I'm saying? Like, because you never really get to chill. You right. Know what I'm saying so. Like, I like I, honestly, I like to listen to music. I like to like 
hear music live, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I like to go out to dinner. Like, I'm relaxed. I like to drink simple wine. Simple things. You know what I'm saying? It's the, it's the real simple things in life that I enjoy. Yeah. So, like, the more that I get to do those, the better. Oh, I saw you uh, post a tweet the other day about friends with mental illness. Mm-hmm. Have you lost somebody? Or, like, what is that tweet about? Uh, it was um, drugs and mental illness. Like, when people are addicted to drugs or, you know, they get laced, you know what I'm saying? Or, like... You know, I've lost, like, recently I lost a friend because she overdosed, you know? And that was sad, you know what I'm saying? But I've lost multiple friends to overdoses. And, um, like, there's friends that I have that, you know, they have mental illness or they did the wrong drug at the wrong time, and now they're never the same. So it's like losing people in spirit, you know what I mean? Like, when you look at somebody and you don't even see the same person anymore, it's like... It's kind of used, it's like they, they're a shell of who they used to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. they're not, I feel like that's just as sad as losing them to death, just because it's like, you're trying so hard to bring back the person, but they're so far gone from who they used to be. Yeah. So, do you plan on using your music as a way to, like, spread the message of, you know, like, slowing down on drugs? I mean, I don't really believe in doing drugs, you know what I'm saying, but... I have a lot of friends and I know a lot of people that do do that. So I would never judge people for doing it because I understand when when it gets rough and when it hits the fan, like you can't really judge anybody's decision at that point because you don't know what they've been through, you know? I used to do drugs. I used to like, all sorts of stuff, but at, I guess at some point I realized that I didn't want those vices. You know, I didn't, I wanted to kind of like, the, I wanted the, the the mental high, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I wanted to be high off life and just really like love my life. So instead of doing that, I just kept grinding and kept working towards like dreams and stuff. Was there something that pushed you to make that change or did it just come with time and like uh, maturity? Um, honestly, I think one of the biggest things was like thinking about disappointing my mother, you know? Like mm-hmm. that was the number one like catalyst to me changing my life. It was like, I didn't want to disappoint her anymore, you know? And I wanted to make her proud. Right. So, and then when I had a son, it's just like, I want to make him proud, you know? Game and, time, right? Yeah, it's like, all these people that I love, I don't want to see them frowning, and I don't want to see them down, especially not about me, you know? Especially, and if you're a man, you, you want to be anybody. If you're a man or a woman, like, you want to be the person that people come to, you know what I'm saying? When, right. When it gets rough and when they need somebody, and you can't be that if you're, you know, under the thumb of some drug. You know, it's real. Very real. So, what are your thoughts about this year's um, XXL freshman class? I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what it's looking like, what people are saying. All I know is that, you know, from what I've seen in the past few years, they pick whoever's, you know, popping at the time, whoever got the most hits at the time. Like More popularity yeah, than actual. It's a popularity contest for mm-hmm. sure. Like, it's not about music. I feel like before social media and before all of this stuff, it, it was about music, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But when you can get famous off of a song or two songs or whatever, and, you know, it's just a whole bunch of 10 to 15-year-old kids that are getting you famous that all they do is they're on the internet all day. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that nowadays that happens. Before, remember, that didn't happen like that, you know? Like, yeah. You know, so... It's like, what, what can you do? I can't. I'm, I think everybody's over it, though. So I'm over it with everybody else. <laughs> Heard you. <laughs> I feel it. So uh, what are your thoughts on, I guess, mainstream music? You don't care to make it or, you know, like... Um, mainstream is scary to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I feel like sometimes good music makes it to the mainstream, you know? Mm. And I feel like the only artist that has been able to like be mainstream but kind of like still be himself and stay out of all of the stuff is like Pharrell you know and if there's anybody that I would want to like base my career off of it would be him because you know he gets so much respect from everybody on every level Mm -hmm. you know and it's just he stayed himself the whole time so I'm not 100% against you know being mainstream and doing mainstream music or like moving into that realm but it was it's definitely something that I would have to ease into and do it my own way so that I, one I don't lose myself and you know I don't lose myself <laughs> that's, that's respectable it, you know yeah um so if you could have a collaboration with any artist out right now 
Who would it be? Uh, I guess J. Cole. You know? uh, Kendrick is dope. Um, I would even do it. I want to do something with Chance. Kanye. Uh, that's pretty much it. Yo, a Cole feature would be dope and a Kendrick feature would be dope. Is there anybody else on uh, Dreamville or TDE you would like to work with? Uh, as far as Dreamville, you know, J.I.D. is fire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's and, um, dope. Freaking Earth Gang is dope. You know, yeah. it was crazy. I know this dude, um, Childish Major, who, like, he he's, he works heavy with um, with Dreamville and Cole and everything. He's fire producer and artist. Nice. Just nice nice plug right there. That's my that's <laughs> the, that's the bro. He's dope. Dope Atlanta artist. Um, he, you know, know, knows all of them. He be on tour with them, do everything. And he kind of, we did a track together and he showed it to Irving and he was like, yo, go to his dope or whatever. So it's fire to, you know, I would love to work with them. You know what I'm saying? And as far as um, TDE, Sis is fire. Uh, He's great. Isaiah Rashad is dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there's more artists that are dope, but I think those are the main two that it was, I would just love to hop on the track with them. Just be like, vibe. Yo, they got the vibes, man. For real. I can dig it. <laughs> All right, so tell everybody where they can follow you on Instagram, Twitter, and listen to your music. Um, well, you can find me anywhere at Code of the Friend, Twitter, Code of the Friend, <laughs> Instagram, Code of the Friend, K O T A, the Friend, spelled regularly. And yeah, I'm everywhere, bro. He's everywhere, guys. All right, it's Nile Simone. You tune into the Nile Simone show at Power 105.1. Thank you so much, Coda, for coming. Thank you so much.